Hello everyone, what we are going to focus on in this video is the identity matrix or the unit matrix, right? So we are going to look at what is the identity matrix for a 2x2 two two matrix. So we're going to use I for identity matrix. So the identity matrix is going to equal to 1, 0, 0. One. So one zero zero one is the identity matrix for a two by two matrix, right? Where the main diagonal or the leading diagonal is one. So all the digits is one, as you can see here, and the rest is zero. Right? For a three by three matrix, it is similar. The identity matrix would equal to, which is I in this case, is going to equal to one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So this is the identity matrix for a three by three matrix. And you can see that the leading diagonal is one. All the digit is one and the rest is zero. For a four by four identity matrix, the same idea. So it's going to equal to one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one all right so these are the identity matrix now the identity matrix function like the number one you know if you multiply one times any number it gives you back itself so therefore the identity matrix times any matrix will give you back itself and let's look at, at an example. Let's say that you have a matrix A, right? And A is equal to 1, 2, 1, 3, right? And you take the matrix and multiply it by its identity matrix. So the identity matrix for a two by two matrix here would be one, zero, zero, one. So if you take this matrix A and multiply it by the identity matrix, it should give you back itself. So therefore, A, which is matrix A times its identity, must equal to A. All right, that's what we are seeing. So let's multiply that. We know that A is equal to 1, 2, 1, 3. All right? That's what A is. We know that the identity matrix is going to be 1, zero zero one now we know that we multiply matrix by a row times column right and if you check the order of the matrix both matrix here are two by two which means that the number of column in matrix a is equal to the number of rows in matrix I. So therefore they can be multiplied. 
So it's going to be one times one and one times one is going to equal to one plus two times zero, which is zero. And we use the first row to multiply the second column. So it's going to be one times zero, which is going to give us zero plus two times one, that's going to be two. Then we finish with the first row. So it's going to be the second row. So it's going to be one times this one here, which is give it plus one plus three times zero. That's going to give us zero. Then it's going to be one times this zero, which is going to give us zero. And it's going to be three times one, which gives us three. It's going to be zero plus three. And then if we add these up, we can clearly see that all we will get is matrix A, which is one, one plus zero, that's going to give us one. Two plus zero, that's going to give us two. Three plus zero, that's going to give us three. And one plus zero, that's going to give us one, which takes us back right where we started. Clear there? So any matrix times its identity will result in the matrix. All right. Another thing about the identity matrix is that the inverse of a matrix times the matrix itself will always result in the identity matrix, right? And let's prove that. Let's say that we have a matrix A, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And what we want to find, we want to find A inverse times A, right? That's what we want to find. So we want to find what A inverse times A would result into. Now, what we know is that we find the inverse of a matrix by first find the determinant of the matrix, right? So the inverse of a matrix, so A inverse is going to equal to 1 over the determinant of A Over the determinant of A times the adjoint of A, right? So that's how we determine the inverse of A. So now, let's determine the determinant of A first. So we know that A, the determinant of A, is going to equal to the product of the main diagonal. So one times four, that's going to give us four minus the product of the minor diagonal and three times two, that's going to give us six. So clearly here, the determinant is going to be four minus six, which is negative two. That's what the determinant of A is. Now the adjoint of A is going to equal to, we switch the terms of the leading diagonal, so it's going to be four, one, and we change the sign of the other diagonal, so it's going to be negative two and negative three here.
So therefore, A inverse is going to equal to 1 over negative 2 times the adjoint of a which is going to be 4 minus 3 and what we have here is negative 2 1 This can further simplify to give us where we distribute this negative a half to each term. So negative a half times four, that's also going to give us negative two. Negative a half times two, that's going to give us positive one. Negative a half times negative three, that's going to give us positive three over two. And negative a half times one, that's going to give us negative one half, right? So this is basically the inverse of A. So now we can go ahead and find A inverse times A. So we know A inverse is actually negative 2, 3 over 2, 1, and negative 1 over 2. Times matrix A and matrix A is defined as 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we know that we multiply matrix is row times column, so let's divide the first matrix into rows and then divide the second matrix into columns. So it's going to be row one times column one, then row one times column two. And remember that we multiply corresponding elements. So this is going to equal to negative two times one, that's going to give us negative two plus one times three, that's going to give us three. Then it's going to be negative two times two, that's going to give us negative four plus one times four, which is four. Then we're going to take row two to multiply column one and then row two o to multiply column two. So it's going to be three over two times one, which is going to give us three over two plus negative one half times three, that's going to give us minus 3 over 2. Then it's going to be 3 over 2 times 2, which is going to give us 3. Plus negative a half times 4, that's going to give us negative two. All we need to do is to simplify this. Our final answer is going to be
negative 2 plus 3, that's going to be 1. Minus 4 plus 4, that's going to be 0. 3 over 2 plus minus 3 over 2, that's going to be 0. And 3 plus minus 2, that's going to give us 1. So therefore, the answer is 1, 0, 0, 1. And we know that 1, 0, 0, 1 is equal to i, which is the identity matrix. And therefore, we have proven it. So this is an important thing to note that i is equal to the inverse of a matrix multiplied by itself. So any matrix multiplied by its inverse will result in the identity matrix.